Hey people, um, we're continuing with life science in a nutshell, my notes, so we're doing some studying today, um, and if you have any questions about any of the material, you're free to go ahead and Google, um, some of the information, there's a lot of details in Wikipedia, a lot of my information, I got it from there. So <clears throat> right now we're we're just um, gonna go over a little bit about more about the pro the the proteins and the membrane of cells that um, take uh, molecules into and out of cells. So Ruben, say hi. Hello. Um. So. Um. Okay, so we, we were talking about active transport. So active transport is called active because you're using energy to move molecules against a concentration gradient. So essentially you're using like um, energy, ATP, etc. Um, as the molecules are being channeled out of the cell. Uh, from lower concentration to higher concentration because these molecules are important and they need to be exported out of the cell for different purposes into surrounding cells and tissues. So, um, and um, there's also other channels or proteins that serve as channels in the membrane, which <clears throat> are not really active they don't use energy because they pump molecules with the gradient so from higher to lower concentration so um go, go ahead and read we've been read some of this channel protein channel protein it allows water molecules or small ions to flow very quickly aquaporins ion channels ion channels function as gated channels open and close in response to a stimulus carrier proteins such as glucose transporter undergo sub subto subtle subtle change in shape so actually carrier proteins are like active transporters so they they um they you they they transport larger pro, larger molecules such as glucose um, versus ion channels are oh, transporting ions or small small things you know um so the 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 carrier proteins um they they change their shape to un, to trans translocate solutes binding um so they bind on one one um, part of the molecule and um, move them across the membrane. So they carry the, the molecule across the membrane. Um, so this is used for large, usually non, uh, excuse me, large polar molecules, which have no way of getting through the membrane. The only thing that go through membranes are really tiny, mo like tiny things. Um, and mostly polar things, nothing large or or non-polar. <laughs> what did I say? Mostly non-polar um, things can move across membranes, but polar and larger molecules use um, uh, transport proteins. And then a sodium potassium pump. What is that? The pump that. Uh actively maintains the gradient of sodium ions na plus and potassium ions k plus across the plasma membrane of animal cells k plus concentration is low outside animal cell and high inside the cell uh, and then sodium concentration so na okay. plus concentration mm -hmm. So it's high outside the concentration gradient an animal cell and low inside the cell maintains these concentration gradients using the energy of one atp to pump three na plus out and two k plus in 
Hmm, interesting. So sodium is low outside. Um, so, I mean, potassium is low outside and high inside. And then this is what, what happened. This is what is maintained. And, and then the sodium is maintained high outside and low inside. And the pump takes out sodium, three out, potassium, two in to maintain. So it's not even. There, there's different concentrations. My membrane potential acts like a battery, an energy source affecting traffic of all large, excuse me, all charged substances. Because um, the inside of the cell is negative compared with the outside of the membrane. Um, and then the potential favors passive transport of cations into the cell. Cations are positive and anions out of the cell. Okay, so since it's highly negative inside, the negative ions will come out of the cell. Electrogenic pump, a transport protein generating voltage across the membrane, Sodium potassium pump is the major electrogenic pump for animals. A proton pump actively transports hydrogen ions or protons out of the cell, the main electrogenic pump of the plants. So yeah, so there's all different kinds of these channels and channel proteins. Um, some are going through um, passive diffusion, some through active across membranes. Um, as you can see, co-transport is when a single ATP power pump um, transports one solute. Um, it drives active transport of several solutes in the mechanism, uh, transporting, then diffusing back passively through a transport protein. So, coupled with the active transfer of another substance against its concentration gradient. So, it's like multitasking. You're taking one out passively and bringing one in actively. I guess. And it's using an energy power. Huh. Exocytosis. What is that? Uh, it's a mechanism by which substances are moved from the cell interior to the extracellular uh, space as a secretory secretory vesicle v vesicle vesicle yeah fuses with the plasma membrane example a neuron uses exocytosis to release neurotransmitters that signal other neurons or muscle cells so endocytosis is the opposite of exocytosis. Cellular uptake of biological molecules and particular um, matter via formation of vesicles from the plasma membrane. Three types of endocytosis are phagocytosis, pinocytosis, and receptor-mediated endocytosis. Um, Phagocytosis is when the cell engulfs a particle by wrapping pseudopodia, um, which is an extension of the cytoskeleton or um, filamentous protein, um, around it and packaging it with the membrane enclosed sac that can be large enough to be. Um, what does that say? Oh dear. Um, a vacuole? Is that what it says? Some of this stuff was spelled wrong. Then the particles ingest, digested in after the vacuole fuses with a lysosome containing hydrolytic enzymes. And pinocytosis is a type of endocytosis in which the cell digests or ingests an extracellular fluid and its dissolved solutes, so it's smaller things. Cellular membranes. Cellular membranes. So we're going to do this in the next video. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.